Hi, my name is Jennifer Roman. I'm a teaching artist for the Darlington Art Center, and I'm very excited to be making this video for the Delco Arts Week. Um, today I'm going to do an abstract scrape art painting. And one of the things that I love about this technique is that it is truly enjoyable for artists of all ages and abilities. So the materials that we're going to use for this painting are uh, any type of thick, heavyweight paper. I'm using a sort of handmade, very heavy bodied paper. It's almost like a heavy, heavyweight watercolor paper. And I have tempera paints. These are commonly referred to as poster paints. This is a children's set. Uh, and I'm going to be using the cool colorway. I am also going to use either a white or a black oil pastel at the very end. We'll get to that later. And I'm using the Crepa Junior Artist brand, but you can use any oil pastel, or you could also use a, a crayon or a gel stick if you have that at home. And we're either going to pour straight from the bottle or use craft sticks or popsicle sticks to scoop it out. And then we'll use a scraper to spread the paint. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out the edges so I have a nice clean finish. And just so you can see one that is completed, this is something similar to what our finished work will look like. Put that up here. And get started with masking out the edges. And this is painter's tape. You want a relatively low tack masking tape. So painter's tape is definitely what I recommend. If you have a craft masking tape, those are often quite low tack as well, and they should work for you. This does not have to be perfect. It is just to keep a nice border around the edges from getting paint on it. That will give us a clean framed looking finish. And you may have noticed that I have torn edges on my paper. I like that raw look. You could certainly use a finished cut edge paper if that's your preference. You could also use cardstock or poster paper or mat board. I've used leftover mat board that I've gotten from frame shops um, in the past for this project as well. Any heavier weight paper works really great for this technique. So I'm done with my masking tape. I have a nice border all framed out and I'm ready to start painting. And I am going to try and pour directly from my paint bottles. So I'm just going to kind of shake out little sort of dollops of paint and I'm gonna go right down my row and just add different colors in different directions. I'm not going to be super careful about amounts, but I do want there to be a sort of variety in the direction that I pour in. It will just help when I start my scraping to get variation and texture on my finished painting. I also have some metallics mixed in in these uh, uh, temperas. I really like using metallics in my paintings. I um, enjoy the texture and quality of metallics, and I always feel like they give it a little pop. And let's do a long bit of this royal blue. All right, oh, and I did not mention that my scraper is just a piece of cardstock. You can use a piece of recycled cardboard from a packing box or a cereal box, or you can buy paint scrapers. Um, in children's craft sections. And what I did is I have three straight edges and then on one edge I made a serrated edge that I'll use for texture and I'll show you that up close later. So what I'm going to start with is my straight edge 
and I'm just going to start bringing the paint across the page. And I have some on my scraper, so I'm just gonna kind of drag it back over here. And you can see that pigment is left underneath the areas from where the paint was sitting. And I really love that effect. So you have sheer areas and then areas where the deeper color has kind of set up. And we're just gonna keep going with this process, different directions will add to the texture and dimension of your painting. We can go right over the edge of that tape. We don't have to try and be careful and protect the corners because it's already masked out and protected for us. This is definitely what I would consider a process art project in that it is all about the enjoyment of the art making and you don't have to focus on what your end result is going to be, just on the joy you take from the interplay of color and texture. So I have a I'm actually sort of blotting now my scraper, which is creating some really interesting texture. You, if you can see on the scraper that there is texture there, I'm also getting that effect where I press the scraper into some of the thicker areas of paint. And that's really cool. Now I could get away without adding more paint right now, but I think that I am going to add a little bit more. I wanna see some contrast. So I'm thinking perhaps some of this sort of teal color here. And I'm going to try and do some little, little blobs. That was what I wanted there. And I am thinking that I want some of the brighter colors. So maybe this metallic light green over here in a stripe, I believe. And then let's see what we get. I scrape downwards. And now this one will scrape over. And this one will come back across. And this one will go down. And now I do again have a lot of paint. So I'm going to make some more of those textural sort of stamping motion. And I did stay with these cool colors as I originally mentioned, but I'm almost feeling like, what if I add some contrast? I'm looking over at a sample I have next to me to show you the final step, since this one won't be dry enough to do that. And I'm loving that it was actually both warm and cool colors, which gives a really nice contrast but as I continue with the stamping motion I'm actually really happy with the effect that's having so I think I am going to do a few more of those yes. and since I don't want to waste the paint that's on the scraper just to see if, oh, and there's some in this corner. Well, now I am going to use my serrated edge. And the way I did that is I just took scissors and cut little triangles into the cardstock or the mat board. So I am going to make texture 
by drawing with the serrated edge in a sort of semicircle pattern. And then maybe one over here. And you know what? I'm actually not happy with these. So the really cool thing is that I can just press into them and change it. That's the great thing about playing with texture and process art is you're making yourself happy. It's no, the outcome is not predetermined. It's all about what you want to see. So now that I have that, I'm sort of looking at my composition and deciding what would really give it balance. I feel like I have a lot of texture from this pressing motion, which I love, but I also love some of the areas of sheer color. So I think what I'm going to do is do a semicircle over here. But I'm not going to do a grouping of them. I'm just going to do two. And then I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to sort of write like loopy lines. I'm really just playing right now with ideas. I'm not having a predetermined outcome in mind. I'm just looking and seeing what I like and what I might want to see further. And I actually am quite happy with this already. So here is where I am so far with this painting. Very abstract, very textural. So if that painting were dry, I would be ready for my oil pastel. Since it's not, I'm going to take this one that I already did. And I am going to use, because this is a fairly dark painting, I'm actually going to use white oil pastel. And I think what I'm going to do is write a sentiment. And I think what I will write is the phrase, art is joy. And I'm gonna repeat that around the edges of my frame. Okay, 
And there you have it. Process scrape art painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this technique and have a wonderful Delco Arts Week. Thank you. Bye-bye.